Hi, everyone. Good evening. Did you get a chance to enjoy the food? Yes, great, awesome. Uh, my name's John Fitzpatrick. Um, I am now on my, I just celebrated my Google Versary with uh, Google uh, last week, my first year with Google. Um, <laughs> yes, and I am in charge of startup programs for uh, Google Cloud across Japan and Asia Pacific. Um, and what this really is, is, you know, this event for us is, was an opportunity for us to work closely with uh, the team, Hui Yi and, and Manny, who's standing right over there, on, um, on their efforts to help build up the uh, Google Cloud Platform user group, which hopefully all of you are part of now. Can you raise your hands if you've actually signed up and are part of the user group? Only a few of you. Okay, so great, actually. This event is a great opportunity for us to help build up that user group. Um, you know, we want, we think that, you know, that user group and, and what we do as part of building up kind of the startup ecosystem development kind of goes hand in glove. Because in both cases, what we're talking about is, you know, we don't want to come here and sell you. We know startups hate being sold to, right? Um, what we want to do is help build community in and amongst startups uh, that are using Google Cloud Platform, that want to learn more about Google Pl Cloud Platform and you know, want to learn, frankly, from each other, which is where we had the inspiration to have folks like you know, Carousel and Vicky come up on stage today and tell you their experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly of making transitions in technology, um, and some of the reasons why, you know, what, they're, what it's like to be using Google Cloud at scale today as a, as a very successful startup, or in the case of Vicky, uh, a startup that made it through you know, to acquisition by Rakuten, right? So, um, you know, I wonder how many folks here right now are actually running some kind of uh, infrastructure on Google Cloud today? Can you raise your hand? Okay, only a few of you. Okay, actually, so I'm really glad that I put a few slides in here at the very beginning about, you know, why Google Cloud for startups. Uh, you know, and that's really, I'll take you through a few very basic slides about that. And then I'm going to explain to you also, you know, beyond this user group that we have here, um, some other ways that we can help you if you are a startup right now. Um, you know, we're all about, you know, in the same way we support this user group today by finding a facility and maybe, you know, buying some catering. This is, this is for the community and this is by the community. We try to support it with, you know, finding spaces, finding food and things like this. But we want to help startups at the early, early stage, you know, when you need that support, come together, find each other, um, and maybe even get credits and support. So I'll go into all that detail as well. But, Meanwhile, um, you know, just to talk about Google Cloud, um, you, you may not have heard of us maybe three, four years ago, right? We weren't really on the map, right? I know that for a fact myself. I was working for Amazon Web Services for five years. Um, I actually ran the startup ecosystem at Amazon Web Services before I went, came over a year ago and joined Google. Um, it's really only in the last couple of years um, since Diane Green came on board to help kind of build the, you know, the, the cloud for Google that we've really ramped up in kind of an extreme fashion. Um, and you know, you're seeing some of that investment all over the world, really. I mean, and we are you know, the biggest in many respects when it comes to network capacity, when it comes to peering locations, um, their ability to deliver content, right? This is built on the back of one of the largest internet companies in the world, right? So natural advantages there, but we're able to take that capability and extend it to you know, the larger community, which is what Google Cloud is all about. You know, to that end, I wanted to point out, you know, if I were up here speaking on the stage to you exactly this time last year, how many regions do you think we would have had in Asia? Can someone put out a guess? Three? Anyone else? Two? That man gets a prize right there. It's two. It was which ones? Do you know which ones? It was Tokyo and Taiwan. Yeah, it was Tokyo and Taiwan, and that's it. Since then, we've launched Singapore, we've launched Sydney, we've launched Mumbai, and we have announced a couple other ones as well. Um, can you get, give me a guess on what the latest announcement was? And actually, I have brought up a couple silly prizes. I have. <clears throat> unicorn poop for the person that can answer this correctly. So the unicorn poop goes to the person who can correctly answer what is the most recently announced region for Google Cloud in Asia. 
Sorry? Anyone? Go ahead. Indonesia? Incorrect. Singapore? Singapore? No, we've got Singapore. China? I'm going to drop a hint. Mumbai. Hong Kong. Now, Mumbai. Oh, Hong Kong was announced recently, but it's not the most recent one. The most recent one was announced today. Edward? Someone's got to Google this. <laughs> All it takes is a quick Google search, guys. Malaysia. Nope. Nope. Thailand? Nope. Oh, you guys. No. But what the crazy thing is about this is that what, all these places that you're saying, I think, I mean, this is the stuff, this is how fast we're growing, guys. I mean, we, in one year, we grew from two regions to add Sydney, to add Mumbai, right? To add Singapore. Who said Osaka? Boom. To the gentleman over there. <laughs> Congratulations. I did Google that. <laughs> but I just want to, I mean, the reason I'm pointing this out is just to signal to you, I mean, how fast this network is growing and how much Google is investing in this business. This business is here to stay for Google. This is what Google calls a big bet, right? When Larry and Sergey talk about putting more wood behind less arrows, this is one of the biggest arrows, right, for Google right now, is where we're investing the most money. And so this community that we're building of, you know, 2,000 odd people here in Singapore today is going to continue to grow. We are going to be a serious force in this space. So we really, we really, really, that's why we're endeavoring so hard to help, help you guys build this community because it's going to be, it's going to be a big, big, um, you know, force in this space. So, you know, and I'm pointing out one thing about, you know, it's the infrastructure capacity, capability, and things like that. That's one of the reasons as a startup why you'd want to align with Google Cloud. A couple other reasons why, right? And the one I'm going to point out is just the commitment to open source, right? I think that if you look at some of the major clouds that are out there today and the infrastructure that you can use and look across all the players, I don't think you're going to find a player that is as committed to the open source community and interoperability as Google. And you see it just in, you know, in this list of languages and operating systems and developer tools and data tools that we're committed to, the interoperability. But we're, we're not only committed to that, but also the interoperability between the cloud platforms themselves with, with products and, you know, that we open sourced ourselves, like Kubernetes. You know, and actually, if you can think about two of the most popular open source platforms out there today that originated with Google, Kubernetes is one of them, right? I'm going to give my second dose of unicorn poop to whoever can tell me what the other highly popular platform is that we open source to the community. One of the most popular on GitHub today. TensorFlow. Who said TensorFlow? That gentleman right there, you get some unicorn poop. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. That's right. I mean, these are some of the, whoop, sorry about that, guys. Right. Uh, these are some of the highest engaged communities in the open source community on GitHub. I mean, this is really something that we're proud of, right? And we really believe that, you know, these technologies, they're meant to be collaborated on by, you know, the multitude of folks out there in the world. It's not a few engineers sitting in the back room somewhere in Google dreaming up what's next, right? It's all of you. And that's, it's, it's when you let this technology go and you allow folks to innovate on it is when you, you create the magic, right? So again, it's Google, I think, that really stands heads and shoulders above the other kind of cloud ecosystem players with regards to this commitment. You know, and finally, I mean, besides, you know, besides the open source aspect of things, the interoperability aspect of things, besides the overall size, the infrastructure, the speed of the network, and things like this, right? So, you know, the infrastructure, open, commitment to open source. I think the other thing is startups you, know, you need to be concerned about is cost, right? And, you know, I've, you know, it's, it, says, it shows right there, I mean, all the different ways that you're saving money by using Google Cloud. But again, you know, I feel like this is one of the ways that Google really does stand out in terms of our commitment to, to the, the reduction in cost structures. I mean, the way we bake in, um, you know, cost reductions through, you know, some of our pricing mechanisms, um, you know, in terms of the, the recommendations we'll make around right sizing and things like this. I mean, these are all ways that we stand out as a business. But beyond that, if you are an early stage startup in here today, 
this isn't even something that I want you to worry about right now, right? Because I, I run a program that will extend you as an early stage startup up to $100,000 in credits so that you don't have to pay any money right now. When you're getting started and just trying out a new idea, you know, if you're two engineers with a GitHub account and an idea, I want to give you $3,000 to play around with that idea and see if it actually works. All right? And that's a little bit different from the way we used to run startup programs in the past. I used to only extend these programs through VC firms and accelerators and incubators and things like this. But I want to reach deeper into the community and really find those technologists, those developers that want to try something out, want to try something new, and see if it works. And that's why I want to get this in front of you today. And so for everyone who's in this room today, I mean, that's my offer to you right now. And I'll put a, I'll put a specific URL you can go in and apply at um, on the screen now. But, you know, start with $3,000. And then if this thing takes off, if, it, if you think it's got legs and maybe you start hiring another person or you join one of the accelerators locally, you join Entrepreneur First or you join whomever, um, you know, we want to be able to, to then extend to you you know, up to $20,000, and even further up to $100,000. If this thing really starts taking wings, you get your first Series A from WaveMaker, right? We want to be able to extend that additional capital, that infrastructure capital to you uh, to continue to build your business when you need that capital the most, right? When you have the smallest amounts of money. So, you know, who qualifies for this? Again, to be clear, I mean, this is something that, you know, this is for early stage startups. This is for startups that are Series A and younger. Right, you're less than five years old, you know, and, and we do have to have it so it's in, in our certain certain sales territories. But Singapore is one of them, um, and important also that you that you aren't haven't been coming back to the well for credits again and again and again. Right, you have to come to this program for the first time and kind of go through it. So there's there's a few different considerations there. But again, I'm going to encourage every one of you guys that can take advantage of this to take advantage of this. So this right here is the. Um, that's a QR code and the specific URL that you can go to for the specific uh, sign up for this program. Please do apply. And, uh, and, and you know, we want to help you get started on your journey. Let me know when you're I'm looking around to see everyone taking the pictures right now and I'm going to let you finish that. There's a couple other things that I want to point out on the screen here after this one. So when you're done, let me know. All right, my last piece of unicorn poop is going to go to the person who can guess to the closest thousandth how many thousands of people are part of the Singapore cloud user group at this moment. Anyone want to make a guess? How many thousands of people are, are currently part of the Google Cloud Platform user group? 2,000? Who said that? Who said 2,000? That gentleman right there. Can I throw you the unicorn poop? I'm going to throw it back there. Oh. <laughs> Bad name. Sorry about that. So anyway, yeah, so we've got about 2,000 people in this user group now, right? And um, it's growing. And, you know, you've seen the investment we're making in Asia, right? We, we went from, you know, two to, you know, on our way to seven and you know, regions in Asia, and it's just going to continue to grow. The, the level of investment over a year was blistering, and that pace is going to continue. Um, this group is going to grow massively, get in early, be part of the community. Um, you know, we really strongly encourage you to be contributors to the community the same way that Carousel and Vicky are contributing today. We want to see your startups on this stage talking about your experience with the Google Cloud. We want you guys to run this, organize this yourselves, right? This is not meant to be Google, you know, doing a dog and pony show for you. This is meant to be a community that gets together, talks to each other about best practices, you know, the good things that are happening, the bad things that are happening. We want to create that sort of community. Um, you know, folks like Hui Yi is leading the charge in this front, and Manny out there in the blue shirt are leading the charge on this stuff. So if you want to get more involved in the user group in Singapore, please go talk to them about how that can happen. And also, please do, if you're not signed up already, please do sign up so you can get notifications about when we do the next one of these events. And then finally, um, Esti, my colleague over here, who helps me with startups. And also, I want to call out Esti and Hui Yi for organizing this whole event from STEM District. Thank you so much for all the work that you did on that. Really appreciate it. Can we have a round of applause to those folks for all the work they did? Thanks. Esti would like you to get a t-shirt, much like the one I'm wearing today. 
But first, she's going to ask you to perform a task. And that is to go to that survey and fill it out. Demonstrate to her, demonstrate to her that you filled it out. And she will give you one of these fancy t-shirts. And with that, that's all I have for you at this point. I am now going to take this opportunity. Should I hand it back to you, Hui? Are you going to make that next announcement? OK, great. I'll, take, I'll, get, I'll hand it back to Hui right now. Thanks again, everyone, for showing up. Looking forward to many more of these going forward. And, um, and uh, thanks again for your participation. Appreciate it.